What's up guys? So this is pretty much just a video to show you everything that you're going to need to know to work the board, to recharge the batteries, to change the speeds and set it up the way that you want it. So right now I have it set to go about a safe 10 miles an hour, but you can quickly change it to go at least 20 miles an hour. And I'll show you how to do that now. This is at 10 miles an hour. So if you want to change that, you turn off your board. Unplug this little part here. Here's the changer. Just make sure that the cables here, there's the black, red, and white. Make sure that it lines up with here, the negative and the positive. So the negative is on the very outside left. Just plug that into here. Turn the board back on. You'll see this light up and it has um, the menu and the, the value. Okay, so now what you're going to do is you're going to go to menu 6. I had it on 80% throttle reduction. Now you're going to change the value to 1. And this is what it will be at, at, at its fastest. Hit OK. Hit Set. Turn off the board. So this is the board now at its fastest. As you can see, it's a lot faster. Okay, so as you can see, before our ride, we're starting off at 22.6, and we'll see what it ends at. So I just like to give it a little push, just as if you were longboarding. Then you start off slowly, then you push up again, and it goes faster. Now this is, like I said, at 10 miles an hour. Cruising speed. This is me powered all the time, and I'll show you the braking now. Come in slowly, holding that big button. There you go. So let's see what we ended up at. Twenty two point five. So it just sips the battery. It doesn't use up a lot of battery to move. And like I said, that was continuous use. You might coast a lot when you use yours. Okay guys, now I'm gonna show you how to change the batteries out. 
First, this is the battery cover here. You got your little two Velcro tabs here. You just peel these off. And then what you're going to do is you're going to pull up on each edge here and then just lift up like that. This is held on by magnets. It's got three magnets here and then the metal parts over on the side here. So here we have our batteries. They're held down by the straps here. So what you're going to do, um, first you're going to disconnect the batteries. So as you can see, these two are plugged up together, the red and the black. You're just going to pull those apart. Then you're going to pull off the other ones here, which is the red and the other black. Okay, so those are disconnected. And just make sure that these don't these don't uh, touch each other. So just unvelcro these. Going to take out the first battery here and undo the other velcros, and then take out that battery here. So now I'm going to take you over to the charger, and we're going to hook these up to show you how that works. Okay, so here we have the inside of the charger or charging box and they're separated by this little blue tape here there's this and then there's also this one that has the blue tape so what you're going to do here is you're going to take this plug this up to one of the ports here make sure all the wires match up red to red Then, since this doesn't have the blue stripe, you're going to take the one that doesn't have the blue stripe and hook up these cables here. So that one's hooked up. Then just place it inside the box here. Now we'll get our other one. Then we're going to just lay this one down in here too. Alright, so now that they're both in there, I'm going to close up the top. This particular thing here is uh, an extinguisher. So if anything should happen, if there should be a fire or anything in here, uh, this is a metal box. It will protect, you know, anything from coming out of the box and then this in theory will extinguish the fire or whatever's in here. So we'll close up the box nice and tight. So now as you saw I did not plug any of this into the wall outlet yet. So this was unplugged from the wall, put the batteries on, now we're going to plug everything into the wall outlet. So now as you can see, everything is lit up here. So there's a, a couple different things you can do here. There's the fast charge uh, for storage in case you're not going to use it for a while. You can condition the batteries, discharge, and just a regular charge. So you just make sure that it's at 11.1 volts, uh, 3S battery cell. I always have mine on balance because it keeps all the cells in line and everything balanced and synced up together. So then once you're ready to go, you just hold in the start button. And you're good to go. It usually takes a couple hours to charge, so. And we'll see how long it takes to fully charge up. So as you can see, um, they are both done charging and it took 96 minutes or you know almost 97 so a little bit more than an hour and a half to charge from almost dead to full which is not bad at all. When these are done charging they will emit like a little chime so you can audibly hear when they're done charging. So now that they're done charging we're going to go ahead and put them back in the board. All that you need to do now is just reverse the whole process. So you're going to go ahead and unplug the charger from the wall. So 
So now we'll go ahead and put them back in the board. Okay, now for putting the batteries back in place, it's going to be just a little bit different procedure. First, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to un undo this big piece here. Okay, so you have these pieces here. Those are unhooked. I also like to mark how many times these have been charged uh, up to 100%. I've only charged them four times so far. So when we put these in here, we're going to make sure that the the cables are in towards the closest part here. So this one will go in like this. So that one's in here. We'll tighten it down. And then the next one will flip over to make sure that the power cables are in inside here. Okay, now that those are fastened, we're going to connect the one red cable and one black cable together, which will be these, the two top ones. Just put these together like that, and we'll put them underneath the other cables, just so they're kind of held down. Now with this, we'll go ahead and connect the black one first. The blocks connected. Now we have this one here. We're going to go ahead and connect the red one. So the red's connected. Everything's connected except for this red thing here. So what we're going to do is when we connect these, we want the edge of this connector touches the edge of this first. And then you can push it in. Everything's connected. Push this in here. Put the top back on. Velcro these back. Everything's set. Here's our little voltage tester. As you can see, we're at 25.1 volts. Now, the couple videos I made before with the Wii remotes just showing you how easy it was to change the settings was just for that. I recently upgraded that to a controller called the Nano X by Nertion. It looks more like an eboard remote control and it works a lot better. I have had no problems with this. It connects every time you turn on the board and I haven't lost any connection. So it also looks a lot cleaner. So I'll get and turn this on and give you a little preview. So the board is on, you just turn on the remote here, you'll see the lights flash, and it's solid, that means it's connected. So what you do is, if you want to go forward, you can slowly push this forward, and the more you push, the faster the board goes, you release, it returns back to neutral. If you want to break, you just slowly push back, or however hard you want to break. So we'll go forward, and then break. Very simple to use and it has a rechargeable battery inside. Works a lot better than the Wii remotes and it just looks cleaner. So that's pretty much it guys. Everything on the board that I built on here is available to be replaced easily and cheaply. You can get all the parts that I got pretty much from uh, Hobby King online. So if anything goes wrong, it can be replaced. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you later.